You're listening to Talk Sports 2, where we should now have been bringing you live an exclusive commentary of the one-day international series between England's cricketers and South Africa, but ongoing and ever-evolving issues with the coronavirus pandemic. I think we've still seen no 50-over action so far after England, of course, won the T20 series. The opening game now cancelled and the second game, at best, delayed. I have a better idea come tomorrow morning whether or not a delayed two-match series can indeed start on Tuesday before the England squad are scheduled to fly home on Thursday of this week. So it's certainly all pretty tight and it all depends on the next round of COVID-19 testing within the tourist camp. Delighted to say that we're joined by our reporter out in South Africa, TalkSport 2's brilliant man on the ground, Neil Manthorpe. Neil, greetings and maybe if you can update us where we stand from, as you understand it, first of all. Well, gosh, um, the England Communications Department has been the very best in the world ever since uh, Danny Rubin took over as the media officer. But there obviously um, is a lot that uh, that perhaps he isn't even aware of. Um, you know, the COVID protocols, the medical team, this has been taxing and challenging for all of us trying to get uh, ahead of it. But we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard an update. The two tests that came back positive in the England squad were both uh, felt to be uh, suspicious because, um, you know, the, the two members of the squad, one management and one player, uh, were, were felt to have, have been absolutely, you know, as close to zero risk as possible. They'd been in contact with nobody. And so they the, a, an upgraded test was, um, was commissioned on those two positives to find out basically whether they were whether they were false positives. Um, the upgraded test takes a long time. We're still waiting for those results to come back. Um, uh, but we we still don't actually know if they come back negative whether the two games will be played on Tuesday and Wednesday as day nighters at Newlands. That's what Cricket South Africa are hoping for. That's what Ashley Giles, the ECB's director of cricket, said that that they were hoping for yesterday. But another statement uh, last night said that uh, upon receiving the results of the upgraded tests on the two positives, the two boards would then discuss the best way forward. So uh, we are, I'm afraid, uh, in hanging around mode um, because even if, even if those do come back negative, those tests, are the players on both sides for that matter, in the right frame of mind to play back-to-back ODIs. I mean, back-to-back ODIs were actually, because of the Federation of International Cricketers Association's um, uh, um, ambition to look after, the to manage player workloads, um, uh, in the back-to-back 50-over games were actually last played over a decade ago. So it's it's a big call, particularly from England, you know, to, to agree to play back-to-back ODIs um, anyway. Cricket South Africa are obviously very keen to. They're desperate to, actually. It's a lot of money at stake. But, um, but we, we are pretty much where we were this time yesterday. We're waiting. So many motivational factors to try and get this over the line, man, as as you've just highlighted so eloquently there. I guess, first of all, what's your gut reaction? I think I know probably what it is as to where we're heading. And and if we don't get these games, it's a big disappointment. But how much of a blow would it be given, I know it's a tough pandemic, it's a tough situation, but the lack of clarity and and the possible mishandling here of, of quite a few of the different phases? You know, I've, I mean, I, I was not involved, but I was watching and reporting and covering on the establishment of the biosecure environment from for, for six weeks before England arrived. I was in contact with Dr. Shuab Mandra, Cricket South Africa's um, chief medical officer. I've seen personally firsthand the security around the Vineyard Hotel. I've um, seen it certainly um, at Newlands and Bulan Park. I've, you know, I... I mean, it is. It, I have no previous experience of a biosecure environment. I wasn't in England in the summer, obviously. Um, but you know, I, if I, I mean, I, I was looking for potential shortcuts and uh, and slapdashery, um, and I've just been so impressed to the point of intimidation, which I think is is partly the point. You know, they've had a they've had a blue light, uniformed police presence everywhere around the hotel, the perimeter security, security cameras in the corridor. Honestly, I mean, you would think there'd been a nuclear fallout or at least a bubonic plague. 
Um, they, 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 Cricket South Africa, to my mind and to the evidence of my eyes and the interviews that I've had have, have really done everything they possibly could. Now, you know, there's um, a certain amount of misinformation, I think, and, and clickbait reporting because uh, it was never advertised that the England team would be able to play golf, for example. But, but the squad were filmed pushing golf uh, clubs through the airport on arrival. So it was always obvious that the bubble here in South Africa would not be as aggressively applied as it was in in the UK in the UK during during the summer. I mean, they they did play golf. The golf course was cleared. They never went into the pro shop. The England players. They never went into uh, the clubhouse. They went straight from their biosecure bus to the first tee, played eighteen holes, got back on the bus, and came back to the biosecure hotel. And again, that was a deliberate thing agreed between the boards to try and and introduce some kind of normality and relief. Yeah, they're on a tour, aren't they? They're away from home again after this lengthy bubble for so long. You've got to consider that human element. Well, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. And we've just seen the last couple of days, Tom Banton and Tom Curran have just pulled out of the um, Big Bash League, citing bubble fatigue. It is... It is it is stressful. I mean, you know, and people might laugh and go, oh, yeah, how stressful can it be staying in a five-star hotel? Well, very, actually. You know, it's, I mean, players on tour, on cricket tours, uh, routinely spend, many players routinely spend 24 hours or 36 hours in a luxury hotel room when they choose to. There's a big difference between choosing to and not being allowed out. Neil, thank you so much for the very latest. We really appreciate it. That's TalkSport and TalkSport 2 reporter Neil Manthorpe out in South Africa.